Hi everyone, I'm Eric Fritz with INE Technologies. We're a reliability equipment supplier specializing in vibration, ultrasound, infrared alignment, uh, motor circuit analysis, as well as many other PDM technologies. Uh, we also supply training uh, for the implementation of all of our products, which is the reason for our video series. Uh, if you have any feedback or any other product videos you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out to us at any time. You can find us at our website, www.ietechnologiesllc.com. Uh, if you have any interest in the products that we're supplying, we can also help with that. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the video. Here we have uh, our FLIR C3 camera. Uh, this is going to be almost identical in features and is identical in uh, the shape and size as our FLIR C2 camera. I'll get in the difference of the features uh, later on in the video. Uh, but going over the camera here, we have uh, very few buttons to go over. Uh, this one here on the top is our on-off button. And this is going to be our image capture button, and it's also going to be an, uh, a menu select button once we get into the camera. I flip the camera around. We have our infrared and visual uh, cameras right here, as well as a lamp uh, for enhancing our, our visual light images. On the other end, we have just internal memory and uh, uh, our image transfer uh, data cable connection here. Everything else is going to be done via touch screen. So you're going to tap the screen to bring up our menu options. Um, going from left to right here on the camera, we have our spot temperature reading in the top left, and it's reading this, the fixed center spot here. Uh, I have mine set up in Fahrenheit. It's our battery warning here, and then I'm actually connected to Wi-Fi on the, on the right here. So uh, I can remotely uh, send images over to my phone or a tablet if I wanted to. Um, our menus from left to right, I'm going to go over real briefly. This is our playback button for our looking back at our images. These are our image modes. This is our spot measurement options. These are our color palettes. And this is our option for lamp on and off. And then our settings menu. Uh, just looking at the screen here, I have my temperature scale, my level and span on the, the far right. And that is always in auto, focus, or auto uh, temperature range unless I lock it. So to lock it, all I'm going to do is tap it. You can see there's locks on top and bottom. And that means that anything that I look at over and above that temperature is going to show up either black for dark or white for hot. So looking at something dark like this is just telling me that it's below my low end temperature scale. Um, you can do more analysis with this from the software than you can on the camera. You can't manually adjust that span from onboard the camera. To get back into auto, just tap it again. I'm going to go through the menu options here in greater detail. If I tap our playback button, the camera does have the capability of storing both a visual and an infrared. So here's our infrared, here's our visual. We're going to swipe left and right to look back at other images. And if I want to get back, I'm going to hit the top bar as an escape key. Going back to our next menu is our image mode. So we're in a standard thermal image mode. Uh, and you can see that I'm looking at some, some connections here. If I go over here to the thermal mode, you can see the amount of detail that's added. And our, that's our thermal MSX uh, patented technology, which again is going to overlay a lot of the details from our digital image in our infrared image. That can always be turned on and off at any point. Our next one over is our picture in picture. A very nice feature for images that may not have a lot of thermal contrast or gradients on the image. And then we have just our digital camera. Again, no need for the digital camera as the camera takes a digital image when you store an infrared. I'm going to go back to my thermal. Next menu over is our spot measurements. So we have our center fixed dot. We can clear the screen of anything by putting no measurements. And then our hot spot detection. This is key for looking for hot spots on motors or whatever it is that you're inspecting. Uh, it's really a time saver because if you didn't have that on, you'd have to manually look for it with a center spot and I would have to find the hot spot on this connection manually. 
Our next feature over is going to be our cold spot detection. Um, good for HVAC refrigeration type applications. Uh, and our next menu over is going to be our color palettes. We're limited in what our color palettes here are. We have iron, rainbow, high contrast, rainbow, and then a white hot uh, palette. But again, you can use more of these from the software. Uh, our next menu over is our lamp. We have on and off or a flash feature. Um, again, for our visual image to show up in a dark, uh, ill-lit room or facility, we want to make sure we either have the lamp on or we have a flash on. That's also key for our MSX images as, again, we're overlaying details from our infrared with our visual. Uh, if the visual image is dark, your overlay will not work very well and the, the image will be uh, below quality. Our settings menu is our next one over. We have our settings menu. Uh, we have our measurement parameters menu, which again is going to be some of our atmospheric uh, or surface uh, corrections that can be made. Our first ones are emissivity. Uh, it's kind of a factory default at a 0.95 setting. Most people leave it at that unless they know the emissivity setting of the surface that they're looking at. And we have a reflected temperature distance. All these things can be changed uh, within tapping on the menu. If we want to go back one, get back into my settings. We have our save options, uh, not much to change in there except changing the image uh, format from a standard radio metric or data encrypted image with a JPEG. And then we have our device settings. And in our device settings, we're going to have things like our serial number, uh, the, the language time and units. So again, uh, changing from Fahrenheit to Celsius. We can turn Wi-Fi on and off on the camera. Uh, but again, that is only available on the C3 and not the C2. Uh, and then we have some camera reset options, uh, setting the camera back to the cac uh, factory default. Uh, I'm going to back out of here, and I want to show you one more thing before we uh, complete our video. I want to kind of discuss briefly the importance of using an infrared camera over a spot measurement tool. Um, here we have an X-Tech, which is a FLIR camera, uh, FLIR brand, excuse me, um, for measuring spot temperatures. And I'm going to take a, a reading on the body of these fuses. We got 75 on the first one, 74 on the second one, and about 78 on the third one. Not a big deviation in temperature, but I want to show you the power of the image from an actual infrared camera with our C3. And as I bring it up here to look at our, our connections again in MSX mode, you can see an obvious hot spot in the top right corner on the the cables coming into the, uh, the third fuse here. Uh, again, you wouldn't be able to see that unless you were very close with a spot gun, uh, but with an infrared image, obviously we're getting that detail uh, plain and clear right on the image. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button below. For technical support, product information, or if you'd like to understand how INE Technologies can help you, please visit our website or reach out to us directly. Thanks for watching.